The regular meeting of the Springfield Board of Mayor called to order. Please stand and we'll have the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One point two, the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen held on December eighteenth, twenty eighteen. Are there any corrections? No corrections. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion. A motion. I don't know why we have to have a motion for the minutes, but you, yeah. you keep me straight, so thank you. <laughs> Move for approval. Thank you. I did it a little backwards, just making sure you're awake. No, it's okay. Second? You didn't take that, but okay, second. <laughs> now we're legal, correct? Correct. Y'all know I have to do something backwards. Uh, 1.3, we're going to skip because they are stuck in traffic, and we will move that to the end of the legislative. Uh, we'll move on to 2.1, discuss if possible take action on Ordinance 18-27 on a third and final reading. A ordinance amending the fiscal year 2019's annual budget for the city of Springfield by amending certain general funds and utility fund operating budgets. Do I hear a motion to discuss? So moved. Second. Second. Our city manager would like to speak. Ms. Gina Holt. Yes, I um, would like to say that you all need to amend this on third reading because if you noticed the attachment, Exhibit A, amended attachment, it has now added gas fund expenditures. What happened is the gas fund had a loan in 2011, 1.75 million, and it was called. Now, we haven't had this happen, gosh, I don't know, ever. <laughs> but anyway, um, they called the loan, and we either have to refinance it or just pay it off. So the decision was made to go ahead and just pay the loan off. And it's about one point, well, you'll see the bottom line difference is 1,029,400. So we would need you all to uh, make amendment to add that and then approve it after the, the amended version. Okay. So we want the amendment to add this to the original. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Any of the loans with Fifth Third Bank? Yes, it was Fifth Third. It was, it was Fifth Third, and they did not give us proper notice. We, we received notice, and we were going to have to pay it off within a couple of weeks, and then we argued with them and found out you know we were supposed to receive official notice not verbal and so they did they finally send the letter but a, we had I think 180 days or whatever to pay it off but we decided to go ahead and we would just pay it off okay. any other loans with do we have any other loans I don't think so mm -hmm. what was the payoff amount um, one million twenty nine thousand four hundred so when let me get to originate okay 2011 Hold on. Okay, Mr. Hubbard. Amendment, my amendment was to also pay it off. Okay, can we? Well, as long as it's, it's here. We're just. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll leave as is. Okay. okay. Other questions, gentlemen? Are we clear? Mr. Harris? Okay. Okay. Voting on the amendment. Call the roll, please. Schneider. Aye. Harris. Yes. Gregg. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Trotter. Aye. Head. Yes. Hubbard. Aye. Past 7 0. Now we have to go back and vote. Okay. Going back and voting. On the original as amended. On the original as amended. We have to vote. Okay. Call the roll, please. Harris. Yes. Schneider. Aye. Hubbard. Aye. Trotter. Aye. Sneed. Aye. Gregg. Aye. Head. Yes. Past 7 0. Thank you. 2.2, discuss and possible take action on ordinance 19-01 on a first reading or ordinance rezoning two lots, a total of 3.49 acres located on Bradley Drive in the 9th Civil District 
from MRO Multiple Residential and Office to District RI Restrictive Industrial. Please read it. Ordinance 19-01 and Ordinance Rezoning 2 Lots, a total of 3.46 acres, tax MAC 92H, parcels 8 and 9, located on Bradley Drive in the 9th Civil District from MRO, Multiple Residential and Office District to RI Restrictive Industrial. Whereas Harvey Combs has requested 3.46 acres, a total of two lots, owned by Combs Industrial Services Incorporated, Harvey Combs, located on Bradley Drive, be rezoned from MRO Multiple Residential and Office District to RI Restrictive Res Industrial. Whereas the Springfield Planning Commission has reviewed the request and voted with a favorable recommendation for this property to be rezoned. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee, as follows. Section 1, two lots totaling 3.46 acres owned by Combs Industrial Services Incorporated, Harvey Combs, located on Bradley Drive, tax map 92H, parcels 8 and 9 of the tax maps of Robertson County, Tennessee, or being fully described by Exhibit A attached, are hereby rezoned from MRO, Multiple Residential and Office District, to RI, Restrictive Industrial. This zoning shall become effective following its third and final passage as required by law. Thank you. Do we hear a motion to discuss? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Questions, gentlemen? Pass it so that the money can be put in our pockets. No Bottom questions? Bottom line. No questions? Call the roll, please. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Harris? Yes. Trotter? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Head? Yes. Greg? Aye. Pass 7 0. Thank you. 2.3 Discuss impossible take action on Ordinance 19 02 on a first reading. A ordinance amending Title VIII, Chapter 1 of the City of Springfield Municipal Codes entitled Intoxicating Liquors and Tut. Title VIII, Chapter 2, entitled Beer, to read as set forth in Exhibit A. Will you please read? Ordinance 19-2, an ordinance amending Title VIII, Chapter 1 of the City of Springfield Municipal Code, entitled Intoxicating Liquors, and Title VIII, Chapter 2, entitled Beer, to read as set forth and exhibit A attached. Whereas laws at the federal and state levels have recently changed, affecting the beer and liquor industry, directly impacting how local governments regulate the industry. And whereas the City of Springfield Board of Mayor and Aldermen recently approved an update to the zoning ordinance to provide for the manufacturing of all beverages in the commercial general CG zoning classification. And whereas it is necessary to also update the Springfield Sorry. Municipal Code to reflect the same in order to maintain consistency of applicable reg regulations. Now therefore be it ordained by the Board of Air Mayor and Aldermen of Springfield, Tennessee as follows. Section one, the City of Springfield Municipal Code, Title VIII, Chapter <coughs> One, entitled Intoxicating Liquors, is hereby amended by rescinding Section 8-1021 under definitions and substituting a new Section 8-1021 under definitions to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 2, the City of Springfield Municipal Code, Title VIII, Chapter 1, entitled Intoxicating Liquors, is hereby amended by rescinding Section 8-103, entitled Manufacture Prohibited, and substituting a new Section 8-103, entitled Manuf Manufacture of Alcoholic Beverages, to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 3, the City of Springfield Municipal Code, Title VIII, Chapter 1, entitled Intoxicating Liquors, is hereby amended by deleting Section 8-1055 as a requirement for the application for Certificate of Good Moral Character and City License. Section 4, the City of Springfield Municipal Code, Title VIII, Chapter 1, entitled Intoxicating Liquors, is hereby amended by rescinding Section 8-10910 under Regulations for Purchase and Sale of Intoxicating Liquors and substituting a new Section 8-11910 under Regulations for Purchase and Sale of Intoxicating Liquors to read as set forth and Exhibit A attached. Section 4, the City of Springfield Municipal Code, Title VIII, Chapter 1, entitled Intoxicating Liquors, is hereby amended by rescinding Section 8-11913 under Regulations for Purchase and Sale of Intoxicating Liquors and substituting a new Section 8-11913 under Regulations for Purchase and Sale of Intoxicating Liquors to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. 
Section 5, the City of Springfield Municipal Code, Title 8, Chapter 2, entitled Beer, is hereby amended by deleting the chapter in its entirety and substituting a new Title 8, Chapter 2, entitled Beer, to read as set forth in Exhibit A attached. Section 6, all ordinances, resolutions, and policy and conflict herewith shall be rescinded to the extent of the conflict only. Thank you. We're going to give you a break for a while. <laughs> Do we hear a motion to discuss? So moved. Second. Thank you, gentlemen. Questions? Who was first? Who was first? Were you first or was he? No, no, it, it, I don't need no discussion. It's, uh, no, no, no. We're Gina. No, no Mr. Gregg. Mr. Gray made the motion. Okay. We're, we're trying to get we're who good. made the motion. Oh, we're good. he made the motion, I second it. Yes, sir. I thought you were talking about discussion. No, know. any discussion? Call the row, please. Head? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trotter? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Gregg? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Passed 7 0. Thank you. 2.4 Discuss impossible take action on resolution 19 01, a resolution authorizing and providing the financing of the construction of the wastewater facility project, including authorizing the execution of application, the contractual agreements and other necessary documents, and making certain representations, certificates, and pledges of certain revenue in connection with such financing. Do I hear a motion to discuss? So moved. Second. Thank you. Mr. Snead? This is uh 26 million five hundred thousand right yes it doesn't tell me what it's for it just says wastewater facilities <laughs> project it is the state revolving fund loan and it's a mandatory resolution and it's for the two wastewater holding tanks and for the um interceptor and two. it's the financing at 1.3 percent and how much percentage? 1.3. And it was originally, they committed to 7.5 million, and then they came back later with the 19 million. And so that's why this resolution combines both of them into the 26. Right. So there's nothing else in here but the two tanks and the interceptor. Right. It's also asking for us to, and this is a little different, we're approving the contractual agreements all in this one vote most of the time you bid this stuff out then there's a list of RFP bids on the work then we approve the contract while we approve the well, contract we've already, this board has already approved some of those contracts and this is just a follow-up resolution just for the 26 and a half million just solely for the financing those contracts have already been approved okay and it's we just do really have technicality uh, right I thought and, this was something else no, right. and then later tonight you have to um, um, contracts for community development services for administration of this project or these projects okay. other questions if these gentlemen want to discuss it's really the state is really stepping up the game as far as mandating on the water and the sewage as we we heard in a, in a seminar that we attended Which, and so we have to get on the ball we fought hard to get this fi financing I, I know we have to <laughs> it we wasn't have to easy like, they do a good job. Where where are we with uh, Jacobs and Associates? Tells we need to upgrade our sewer plan. It's a lot to do with this, but it's something in the same line sewer sewer upgrades. They told us to do land application because it was within ten percent. Right. Our former water director talked us into that was a bad idea to do this, do that, do upgrades. Even though we all know the water levels in the creeks are going down, even though we know we're going to be putting more sewage in it as time goes on, in in the in the in the the crisis of an issue to do land application because you can't put any more in the creek is going to come, and I tried to get this board to see it that way, but y'all didn't want to do land application on, and buy land during the recession. On February land, the seventh, we're having our strategic planning. Ten years ago, when land was cheap. During the recession, nobody wanted to buy it. Yes, sir. Y'all need y'all need to be thinking about this. And we need to discuss that on before on we February start pouring, before we start pouring concrete. Okay. Any other discussion? Is it possible to have the uh, 
while the rep could get in the conversation. If you have questions for him. Do you have any comments? Uh, no, I'm going to address exactly. Sure. I think she's planning to questions right. on those items. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah, let's just stretch it. Let's just stretch your legs out. Yes, yes. We're good. Now, we're going to cover those items on strategic planning. Ms. Olin, I've already been over some of the things we're talking about that we'll need to address, and those are good items Autumn's need that you brought up. We do need to talk about those when we have that meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Trotter? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Head? Yes. Schneider? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? Aye. Harris? Yes. Past 7-0. Thank you. 2.5. Discuss impossible take action on resolution 19-02. A resolution accepting an irrevocable letter of credit or a bond for the Oakland Farm Subdivision Phase 3, Section 6. Do I hear a motion to discuss? So moved. Here's a second. Second. Ms. Holt. Okay, these two, the, this resolution and the next one, we're asking the board to approve it conditionally. And if you read the memo that was included in the agenda, the reason that we're asking for a conditional is the developer has to get another letter of credit or a bond and the bank doesn't meet, the committee doesn't meet until January 22nd. So it's after this date. And the bonds expire February 13, so it's before the February meeting. So this is conditional approval for them to get that taken care of. Okay. Questions? Both of these, the, the next two. Timing. It's about timing. Timing. Questions? I was trying to get the all of them to say something, but, I, you know, it's... Planning Commission it's, it's approved a, it. Yeah, it's a good build-up out there. So I sort of drove through that, mm -hmm. so I'm doing great. Okay. No questions? Call the road, please. Sneed. Uh, Harris. Yes. Hubbard. Yes. Greg. Uh, Head. Yes. Schneider. Uh, Trotter. Uh, Pass 7 0. 2.6 Discuss impossible take action on resolution 19 03. A resolution accepting an irrevocable letter of credit or bond for Oakland Farm Subdivision Phase 3, Section 7. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the road, please. Harris? Yes. Schneider? Aye. Hubbard? Yes. Trotter? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? Aye. Head? Yes. Pass 7 0. Thank you. 2.7. Discuss impossible take action on resolution 19 04. A resolution accepting an irrevocable letter of credit or bond for Sleepy Hollow Subdivision Section 7. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Questions, gentlemen? Call the roll, please. Schneider? Aye. Harris? Yes. Greg? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Trotter? Aye. Head? Yes. Hubbard? Aye. Pass 7 0. Thank you. 2.8 Discuss impossible take action on resolution 19 05, a resolution declaring certain properties surplus and disposing of such properties. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Call the road, please. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Harris? Yes. Trotter? Aye. Schneider? Here. Uh, yes. Head? Yes. Bragg? Aye. Pass 7 0. Okay. Sorry. Had to, had to have a quick discussion that our accountants are not here. Still not they're, still here. they're still caught in traffic. We're going to move them to the end of our agenda. Mm -hmm. 3.1, discuss impossible take action on the adjustments of the retail electric rates of the Springfield Electric Department due to the wholesale fuel cost adjustments by TVA. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Rowland. Yes. You have good news or bad news? Well, what I initially sent you was a draft, right. but at 435 today, I did get the final and the final is the same as the draft that I sent you. Oh, okay. okay. So, it, so everything that you have is correct. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for filling in tonight. Any questions? Call the road, please. Head? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trotter? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Greg? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Pass 7-0.
3.2, discuss and possible take actions on the adjustment of the monthly gas rates for the Springfield Gas Department. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Riddle. I don't have any news. Uh, Time of the year, right? They, uh, the PTA is up 31%. Uh, what happened was, uh, of course, the market jumped $1.56 and then the TU from November to December. That's, unfortunately, that's what we're dealing with, with the market prices. Okay. I got Time the, of the year. I got to second your motion. I just left uh, Caldwell County, Texas, where the stinky all starts. So you're right. And they're fussing down there, too. Oh, well, we'll all be fussing, but he's just the messenger. <laughs> Any questions? <clears throat> Call the road, please. Trotter? Aye. Hubbard? Aye. Head? Yes. Schneider? Aye. Sneed? Aye. Greg? Aye. Harris? Yes. Pass 7 0. Do try to do a little bit better next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish you controlled that. 3.3 .3, Discuss and possible take action to approve offers on surplus properties acquired via the delinquent tax sales. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Thank you. Second. Well, you beat me, didn't you? It don't matter. Okay. okay. It's all good. Thank you, gentlemen. Questions? Ms. Holt, do you have something you'd like to say first? Mr. Martin has. Um, Mr. Martin, our assistant city like manager. To discuss. And then we'll take questions. Just a couple things to make you aware of uh, that probably jumped out at you when you were looking through the properties. The first one is the Martindale lot that's $100, the $100 offer. I've spoken with a couple of you that have asked about it. That's about a six to eight foot wide lot that was inadvertently drawn out of a deed many, many years ago that accrued taxes, and uh, we wound up with it. And so Ms. Palmer, who owns the adjacent property that thought that was her property, it's my understanding she thought that was hers, has inquired about how to purchase it. We told her we had a policy, and so she's offered um, hundred dollars on that on that piece of property so the fifteen hundred dollar tax appraisal that you see there is kind of arbitrary but if you look on the map you'll see <clears throat> excuse me exactly how how large that property is the other is the Rudolph Street property you all approved a couple months ago to dispose of the Rudolph Street the former park facility uh, the same way we do the tax sale so that's why that's not on the um, the spreadsheet because it has no back taxes no liens so we got a pretty good offer from Mr. Eden on that which shows you the size of that offer compared to the offers we're getting on the tax sale properties, it shows you the market value of something that's free and clear versus something that's a back tax property. And so we were pleased with, uh, with that offer. The last one is the Parham Street property. That one is, um, we received a lot of interest in that property. The church was very interested in it and so were a couple of developers. And according to the policy that, that the board adopted, we're supposed to vet that development as staff. And so. We looked at it and decided that the offers were close. Harvey Combs actually offered $1,000 more than the church. But we felt like it was better for the church to be able to expand for $1,000 less to recommend to you all for the church to be able to expand their property. And that was better for the development in Springfield. So we would recommend the, uh, the Parham Street property be sold to Community Baptist Church. So. Okay. Questions, gentlemen? Uh, Mr. Hubbard? I definitely would support that. Uh, that uh, particular church is really helping out the community, so they need to expand. There's kind of landlocked. So I uh, second that motion. They're making a difference. Questions? No questions? Call the road, please. Sneed? Aye. Harris? Yes. Hubbard? Aye. Greg? Aye. Head? Yes. Schneider? Aye. Trotter? Aye. Pass 7-0. 3.4, discuss and possible take action on a request from Mayor Schneider related to the short-term rental regulations, the VRBOs, the Airbnbs, and et cetera. Do I hear a motion to discuss? So moved. Oh, second. Thank you. I bring this to your attention because I've had a lot of people who live in the historic district approach me and they are very concerned that we have no rules and regulations around such going on of renting rooms out in their neighborhood and I'm sure it's happening all over Robertson County I got on uh, Airbnb for just a uh, five minutes today and they were all over Robertson County it is hmm. 
consult. So there's a memo in the packet um, by Mr. Ryan Martin, and as you read it, you can see, and it has been discussed at length in each legislative session mm -hmm. for the past few years. And so now we are, the city is limited in what we can do. And there's pretty much, they, we can't prohibit it. And you can require permitting going forward, but you really, but there would be a lot to enforcing it. The current properties would be grandfathered. It would just be very difficult. And to keep up with somebody that hadn't done it in 30 days. I mean, they're just, basically it was the, the legislature passed the law so that you couldn't do anything really to keep that from happening. Okay. May I kind of share the summer? Yes, sir. Public. 13.7-602 say effectively prohibited means a local governing body acts or fails to act in a manner that prevents a property owner from using own, use his property as a short-term rental unit after reasonable compliance with general ap applicable law, which means that we can't tell anyone uh, to rent their properties. And so it's, it's, it's out there. It's, it's just something that Nashville tried to fight and just really lost. As long as they comply. As long as they comply. They have to meet all our codes. Yes, And definitely. they have the anti-noise and all the other regulations that mm -hmm. we have. But as far as telling somebody they can't do what they yeah. want with their property, yeah, we are very limited. Oh, no. <laughs> Any other discussion before we move on? You want to vote in this discussion? No, this is a discussion because I've had so many people approach me about this in the historic district. I thought I should bring it to your attention and not keep it under wraps because I'm sure some of you are going to be approached by that. Well, that's, that's part of the new trend. Yes, it is. It's we'll move on. 3.5, discuss impossible take action on a request by Alderman Snead to amend the Springfield Municipal Codes to allow domestic hens. Do I hear a motion to discuss? So moved. Okay. Second. Thank you. Mr. Snead? Yes, uh, we used to be able to have chickens and other animals in the city. And there was some, there was an issue that uh, chickens crowing, the, ro the roosters crowing, and instead of just addressing the roosters, it was abolished altogether. And, and with, uh, I guess the, there's a lot of things changing, like the way people want to eat and grow gardens and so forth. So I've been asked to to to, to reintroduce this into our statute that our ordinances where you you can have some hens to lay eggs and Metro Nashville they they've had it for several years and uh, the the department in in charge of that there's like 220 permits. In all of Davidson County, that's just people who permit. There's obviously going to be a lot more that never got a permit, but that's the ones that they know about. And I asked him about any issues he had, and it's always the roosters, because when you get them as chicks, you can't you can't tell the sex, and when they grow up, they start crowing. So I guess the kids might be attached to it, and they're going to have to make them a fryer real quick. You know? So if they know how to do it, which I grew up on a farm. I yeah. So, uh, hold on. Let him get finished. I, I'm at, I should have gotten Jane. I wanted to put this in in January and told her to put it on the agenda in January because the chicks arrive, they begin to arrive at the, at the first location here in town in late February. I hear them at the post office. Uh, they, uh, so, I mean, put it on December so it would have three months to, to pass. Um, uh, <laughs> Of course, the second reading would have to be at a special meeting. You can't have you can't have uh, public hearings at special meetings. Right. So, just for the sake of getting it moving along, if uh, if the board's pleasure, we could just pass this, and then maybe at second reading, I can get her the documents to amend to show the the rules, like how many chickens based on your square footage, no roosters, and okay. and uh, the the permitting issue if, if you could so I'd move to approve this uh, tentatively until we can get some more 
stuff to amend it next month so that the season will work out right. Okay. Mr. Hubbard? My uh, argument is going to be contrary. Uh, I sample all of the, the living areas in Springfield. And it's not favorable uh, with having chickens. Uh, and it doesn't really fit into our, our vision. It goes back with a cultural difference that we had a few years ago uh, with something that was permitted in other countries. And people brought the chickens and the roosters in and it, it, sort, of, it, it sort of became a nuisance. But then again, most folks said, I would not want to have that close to my property. And so in order to go along with the vision of growth, and I really feel that let Farmer John have the chickens in the country because we're looking at more of an urban, an urban growth pattern and and no really disrespect to that. Now, I, I know small towns. I kind of left a small town in Texas which fought this, okay? So it's a lot of, lot of places just don't like the fact of people having farm animals, chickens included, in that. It, it, it just takes away. Okay. And so, Other last point, I, I know people are Talk about organic eating, but yet and still we don't want to discourage since we are we're going to benefit from 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 the regentrificational process. We don't want to slow our growth down with letting chickens be, especially in some of our and I hate to put it like it, some of our more feasible and and well looked high dollar areas. Okay. So that's my argument. Other discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, Mr. Snake. There's none other from the other side. Yeah. Oh. I didn't see anybody move. In Nashville, when they first passed it, they did do it based on district. There's like, what, 30 or 60 different districts in Nashville, Davidson County. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot more than bigger cities like New York and Chicago have fewer um, city officials in New York. It's just when they became metro, they didn't want to give up any. Uh, they did do it based on individual uh, districts, and and then they they later changed it that because there was people in other the districts that uh, the that the individual uh, I guess councilman didn't want, and they, then they changed it where it was countywide. But uh, you, you raised the question of roosters. I thought I made myself clear that that's not in. What we're doing, I know I'm a farmer. And, and there, and it would be permitted where what you were referencing having experience was before permit. I'm a farm boy. I know the difference. But, okay, but you, but you were referencing okay, talk to past me. issues, but this would be permitted without roosters. So I, I don't know <laughs> how that came into. Okay, forget the roosters. Let me give the conversation. Okay, let now, I know. I know. Let Nashville Mr. Steve finish. Well. I'm Just, finished. Okay, he's finished. I know Nashville pretty well. Okay. Yes, sir. And my affiliation is is in really heavy duty from downtown all the way out Bellevue, all the way out Brentwood, so. and so you know, and some other areas. And they fought, they fought, <coughs> they fought really hard because no one in those three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand on up home wanted there. And I'm pretty sure. You know, I still live in a good high dollar area, Rose Hill, and nobody wants it on Rose Hill. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Trotter. Okay, if the regulations and all are done, and if it's people in Ward 6 want this, we just pass for Ward 6. That's where it's, I mean, not in any other ward. I don't well, think we can do that legally. There's chickens in town now. They're just. Yeah, I Nobody's heard. Nobody's complaining. Yeah, yeah, yes, they do complain about them. Believe yeah. me. Yeah, I heard one this what morning at 5 a.m. when I was running down by the depot. I heard. It, it, it's bad on 22nd Avenue, but I'm there. It's running loose. Mr. If Harris. Someone does complain. What takes place? 
Well, in the past, the police department's gone out to round up the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Special 22nd, 23rd. My I hate to ask right. what he does with and the chickens. My area. Can, can you speak to it, Jason? You, Mr. Any? Head, will you come to the podium? <laughs> Yes, in the past we've handled the <laughs> poultry complaints, I guess. Can we say. videotape you chasing these chickens? Uh, <laughs> when I was on bikes, we did have a few that we caught. Uh, we haven't had much lately, but we do get them from time to time, and animal control tries to handle it too along with the You haven't had the much police complaints? Officers. or Not not lately, uh, but there are out there. There's a lot of them out there, and, and we do see them, and they're very difficult to corral um, and control. Uh, so that, we had some complaints down on Lower Walnut, I think, we've had in the past. Well, what, what were the complaints? I mean, what, what were the issues? Is it People didn't just, at, just at large? Yeah, yeah yard, that running at loose. the crowing and then at law, running at large. Yeah. So see, that's in the permit. They're supposed to be contained. So I mean, okay, just like dogs or anything other animals, there's rules and <laughs> regulations. That we have dogs we're learning loose too, so. Other questions while Mr. Head, our police chief, is at the podium. Thank you. Other questions? Discussion? I think that there's going to be a controversy in different neighborhoods on the restrictions of that neighborhood that even if it were passed that you could have them, that they would uh, oppose you having them there. And there's not enough of what I'm going to call large lots or yards in the city that you could actually put them out and confine them in a cage to where uh, they wouldn't be a possible nuisance to someone. Thank you, Mr. Gregg. I totally agree with Mr. Gregg, personally. Well, I, I invite y'all, I'll, I'll, I might withdraw this, but in the meantime, just Google the question and you'll see the ordinances of different cities okay. and those cities the same. Okay. Different cities will have a uh, uh, you got to ask your neighbors within 500 feet or 200 feet or you can't have it on. It's got to be so many feet away from the house, so many feet from your property line. Uh, okay. I mean, all, just read the street restrictions on different cities. It's, it runs a gamut on different things. Okay, we'll move on if there's no more discussion. Don't want to well, cut there, anybody well, off. a motion, a second on the floor. Where a I, second on it. Oh, we have a Put motion. To vote to keep the we don't have a motion on the floor. Yes, yes we do. Yes, we do. We do have a motion yeah, to discuss. But, but not a motion to take action. For instance, specific. We don't have it in writing. Oh, so it's okay. Do you want to make a motion? No, I'm not ready. No. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we'll move on to 3.6. Uh, uh, Sir? Could I make a motion to vote on it? What specifically would you be voting on? Voting on not prohibiting, not uh, allowing them to be in the we city. We don't allow them now. We, it's, it's, that's currently the law. So, so just keep. Move on. Just move on. Just move on? Good. Okay. 3.6. Discuss impossible take action on a request from Alderman Harris regarding <laughs> options for resolving the road condition on Duke Court next to Morningside. Do I hear a motion to discuss? So move. Second. I would just have to say before we get started with this discussion, we've been talking about this since I've been here. I can't remember if it's eight or nine years that I've been here or about nine years. Okay. We need to do something for Morningside. This is a good business in Springfield. Um, they provide assisted living and they do a great job at it and they've been hassled by this situation. And I know we've tried in the past and I know our city attorney has tried. But I would encourage us to do something tonight. So could I start off? Yes, sir. Since I'm not sounding redundant with the first part of what you said, the second part is that everyone in this town thought it was a public highway to keep continual discussions, to keep people from feeling like they're paying taxes or have paid taxes in any part of the city, I really uh, moved to declare it as one of our public streets. Well, it's not a public street. 
but just make it one. But we have to have a way to do that. Okay. Whether we we take Can we it, motion it or in? We uh, have which to way you want to make it in? And and Mr. Harris may have already yeah. thought of that, and in, in his putting it on the agenda. basically put it on the agenda <clears throat> to get some discussion with it. As you said, it's come. I've been on the board since 2016. It's been discussed the last two budget years. It's been removed from the budget when it was placed in there. Mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely, in my opinion, it's an eyesore. Absolutely. It is, as Alderman Hubbard said, it's perceived that it is a street owned by the city of Springfield that is not kept up. If any one of us on this board or in this room, if it was in front of our house, we would want something done about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I'm not saying that it's the city's responsibility no. at this point to do that. There are some property owners that are involved in this that um, give the appearance of no response. Or um, I have some pictures here that the um, manager of Morningside provided me that was taken, I believe, on Friday. That uh, it seems to be any time that it's going to come before this board that there's some quick creep put into the potholes that are placed there. You know, your first freeze, that's going to go, that's going to crack, that's going to go away. It's not fixed. I'm sure that that um, Chief Head and Chief Hamill have both expressed uh, their opinions that it is, it's not good for our vehicles that have to respond there. Uh, as far as, as my understanding, if the city <clears throat> were to own the road in any form or fashion, it's going to be a major expense to fix it because we have to not only fix what is there, we have to widen that street, I believe, to meet what the city requirements are. Is that right, Alan? Meet the minimum requirements. Um, in talking with uh, Nelda from Morningside, that apparently they're not getting any response to some of the property owners, too, the, the major property owners that are there. Um, the company that she works for, she feels like, would be interested in, in working to repave part of this. Um, in talking with staff, as far as the city is concerned, that our cheapest or our most economical or probably the only, maybe the only feasible thing that we have to do with this would be to close that public access off of R.W. Gordon onto Duke Court, um, which would mean that people would have to enter and exit from 49 through Westgate. Um, may cause some problem for police and fire response. I don't know in that respect. But I, we have asked a response from the city attorney. Um, I think maybe your clear response has been you don't feel there's anything we can do. Is that correct? Or? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Surely there has got to be something that this board and the city of Springfield can do well, to get and, this road. And if I'm not mistaken, fixed. our previous attorney, Jim Bothrop, worked on this too, didn't he? I'm sure it's been worked I on. Don't no, don't he didn't put forth the effort. effort. But either way it goes, this is this is a responsibility for us as as leaders to look at this, okay? <clears throat> we cannot ignore it. Number one, we can't close it off. We can't close it off because it would interfere with our with our police and fire department, ambulance and stuff like this. Number two, you know, I've been out there several times looking at the patchwork, you know, I was out there the other day and stuff. It just doesn't look good. So we just got to suck it up. Okay, suck it up and make 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 sure that's one of our major projects in some kind of way go ahead on and get it taken care of. We got to call that shot. We got to pull that trigger on that. In the oh. response of, I mean, Chief Hamill's not here tonight. The assistant chief is here. What is your, my understanding that if you're responding to some of these buildings directly behind Morningside that you come off of R.W. Gordon, is we, that correct? We need you to come to the mic before you yeah. answer that question. And you're looking Thank good, you. sir. <laughs> that you, you do respond to the buildings behind Morningside from R.W. Gordon. Yes, sir. We pulled the data earlier today. Um, I was notified by Ryan to pull some data. Um, in 2017, we responded to 53 calls um, in that area, including Morningside, um, one of those being a kitchen fire. So if you give it, um, I did a average mileage from our station to coming off an R.W. Gordon, which was 1.2 miles. Going the other way is 1.7 miles. Um, and it was about a minute and 15 seconds longer going 49. So you give a fire that extra time, it's going to be 
obviously more involved. Does the fire department respond to Morningside if there is a call? Yes. And how do you, what is your Morningside, we that? respond to Morningside going 49. 49. And that's quicker directly into them probably? Yeah, because of the road conditions. <laughs> okay. But either way, one minute to both of you chiefs, one minute can cause a catastrophe. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. That's my argument. But do you respond to that little side street? That's what's in question, isn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I, I've been living there for since 91. I've never never seen uh, every fire engine and ambulance I see comes off of 49. I mean, and if Robert Gordon, they may come off Robert Gordon and go around, but that little side street, I've never seen a fire engine, or not to say they hadn't, I've never seen one back the, there. The buildings that we access off of R.W. Gordon will be your 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8. Um, and we have quite a bit of calls in that area. That first parking lot off of R.W. Gordon, make the immediate right, go right into the parking lot. If we block it off right there, we have considerable amount of calls just in those buildings. I agree there needs to be something done, and I hate to see those folks that live in that, that little area there, you know, left unprotected. So, Well, as I, as, would you done? Yeah, yeah. as I stated earlier, I mean, if closing the road would be one of the options, I'm assuming that the two of you feel that that is not an option for your departments, to have that road closed. Mr. Head? Just, just your opinion. I'm not saying we're doing anything tonight, but... Yeah, based on my experience with answering calls out there, that, that would not be a great, my first idea. That wouldn't be a good one. We use it a lot more than they do, and probably our call volume, I haven't done any research, but my best guess would be at least double, if not triple, responding to calls out there. And if you're getting to that area, a lot of times I would say a third of those are probably um, calls that involve situations where we do need to run emergency traffic and have to get there as quick as we can. Um, we utilize that cut through a little bit more than they do because our vehicles can take it. The fire engines can't maneuver through there as quickly as we can. And sometimes they stage bef uh, on calls that we go to when we go in first. It would not be the best idea, I don't think, for us because we can get in that area a lot quicker. And if you've been there and answered calls, I wish I could take all of you out there. It's very difficult, as they know, to find some of these buildings. They're not labeled good. There's several apartments in these places. And when you're talking about seconds and minutes, they, they do count in those incidents. They do. And we delivered food baskets out there, and we could not find the numbers. We finally had to stop somebody from the city to tell us where actually that building was. Well, in essence, too, and, and I realize that even if the road was closed, that's not going to fix the present condition of what's there. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to make them fix the present condition of what's there. So that still exists for anyone going around that direction. Yes. Um, can we, can staff be asked possibly to meet with the majority property owners to, to see if there could be any? I mean, would that benefit well, we anyone to do that? we have been talking with the majority property owners. And okay. so that's where we came up with the options that they can donate the property through various means. They could donate and contribute money. <laughs> or we can request that they, they take care of getting all the signatures because there's so much involved with the homeowners association and um, there are so many different owners that we would ask them to do all the legwork, get all the legal work, get it done, get the signatures, pay some money and then possibly they, you know, get them to cooperate that way. Um, that's really about all we could do as far as meeting with them. I mean, do you have to be in proper standing with the state of Tennessee to operate a homeowners association? That's probably more of a legal question. To make any conveyance of ownership of the property <clears throat> out of the homeowners association, yes. Typically, homeowners association or condo owners associations are nonprofit companies. They're not heavily regulated by the Secretary of State and whatnot. They're still required to file an annual report. Um, Royal Oaks Condominium Association has been administratively dissolved, I believe, for about 10 or 12 years. Um, I haven't looked in a while. So from a title and conveyance standpoint, uh, even if the homeowners associ if the majority of the owners of the homeowners association took a vote and they wanted to authorize 
the president or the board or whomever to convey the property to the city, that is not sufficient from a title perspective because they have been administratively dissolved so all of the property owners would be required to enter into a deed. Does the fact that they have been dissolved, does that open up the property owners for personal liability for this? I would have to go back, Alderman Head, and review the bylaws for the Condo Owners Association and whatnot. Um, I believe uh, Ryan or Gina had advised that the Condo Owners Association is still operating. They're still collecting dues. They are, are still operating as a business. Um, they just haven't filed annual reports. They just haven't filed their annual reports and aren't in compliance with the Secretary of State. Which is pretty normal, right? For, for those that, associations. Yes. But by doing that, haven't they given up their uh, liability protection? Because they haven't maintained their corporation? Yes. Those homeowner, yes, sir. I, I'm sorry. Yes. They, if it is defunct, that layer of protection is not there. So who do I sue if I knock my front end out of the line? The individual owners. The individual owners. Or the city if you take it over. Right. There, there's another remedy with the home with those condo owners, and this is, um, this includes any of the owners. And by my estimate, there are ten different owners. And any of those particular owners have the ability to make the repair and then sue the other owners to recover. They would have standing to do so pursuant to the bylaws and restrictions. Now, I don't know who's going to do that, but they do have that, do have that ability under the bylaws. Okay. Question? I have, I have the covenants and bylaws here. I've highlighted a lot of it and reviewed it today. I have the charter of the organization. I've reviewed it and have it highlighted. I've got the warranty deed on Morningside. It shows that the covenants are in effect for them. There's the map and the property lines. And I've got it on this thumb drive if you want me to put it on that projector so you can see that the the association in the original deed has information that says the property owners are responsible for the for the common area. Now you told us one time the common areas was hard to uh, ascertain or, or put a pinpoint on who's responsible for how much. What I've discovered is common areas everything that's not under a roof. So basically the foundation of the individual homes are owned individually because they're broken up in condos. Everything outside that foundation, the grass, sidewalks, streets, well not streets, but the parking lot and the drive, driveway because it's not a street, is common area. <coughs> and the way it's distributed, who's responsible for paying for the repairs of course, they're supposed to be paying a homeowner association fees, and, and you're right, they have not filed with the Secretary of State, but Secretary of State told me that does not dissolve the homeowners of their responsibility. Filing with the state is only for a matter of record that doesn't dissolve their responsibilities in the covenants of the deeds of the individual properties. The tax assessor has the properties uh, with an estimated value. All of the properties out there are estimated by the tax assessor to be around $7.7 .7 million. And we have a few people on this board who are wanting to use taxpayer money to widen the roads, build storm drainage, and pave a road for 10 people 
that have $7.7 .7 million worth of property out there. Are you kidding me? That don't look so... Okay. And the road, and the road that you're talking about closing that makes Duke Road, if anybody did their homework, it says right here, we'll maintain that. It says right there if you want to look at it, it's laying right over here. We can't close the road. And the road, Duke Court, that's got the sewer line through it, that's on their property. That's not our road. It's right here. Okay. But the, I did my uh, homework. Now, if you want to use taxpayer money to pay for millionaires damn parking lot, whoa, whoa, whoa. it'll be on y'all. Watch your watch Mr. Your mouth. Mr. Hubbard, your turn. I, I'm not going to get into that debate with you, but the liability of taking care of, of, of the human element that still lies within us, okay? And excuse me, I'm, and I'm not going to put no market value on a person's life. Now, I'm not trying to, don't go eluding that, that I'm trying to give away taxpayers' money, okay? I, I'm the wrong one. I've been, in, I've been in this ball game too long, okay? Hi. That's all I have to say. Mr. Harris. It would just be my opinion, and I'm not saying that, it, that I'm asking that the city own this road, because certainly I would think they could repair this road a lot cheaper than the city could if we owned that road. Am I right in that, Allen? Or, I mean, because we're going to have to do things to it that they wouldn't have to do. It would have to be widened at parts. It would have to be that. If, it, if it's repaired to the estimate that we did over a year ago, y'all, was based on repairing what was there. We need a microphone. Uh, was based on repairing what was there, the width that was there, the the uh, curb that was there, that type thing. If now, if we go in and and have them give you the property. We will have to get a certain easement or get it waived by the Planning Commission or somehow and come up with a road standard that we're going to try to do. Now, once we got it accepted to our name, then you could use federal monies or state monies. Now, at the present, I can't use any state funds on that project. It would only be uh, y'all's money, the city's money that we could use on that. 90% of everything we use in the city comes from the state. Oh, so the surface. the present structure of that is, though, that all of that area out there is a private piece of property. And I cannot see, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of things that I don't know and understand about it, but we caused, or this board brought to the attention that a demolition take place on a private piece of property on Memorial Boulevard with the Royal Inn because it didn't meet codes it didn't meet other things Thank you. this road has got to be the same way if it's a private piece of property and I cannot see why that that the city of Springfield and this board cannot force them into doing something to repair this road just as we would if it was we had a building demolished and then another one that we're fixing to talk about here in just a few minutes and that's my opinion on it. Mr. Trotter uh, I'm going to agree with Mr. Sneed on this that I think the owners should be responsible for fixing it and uh, and it's bad through there too, but I it's simply in, go around it. It's in your ward, correct? That's right. So I simply go around it because, and I just wonder what is Morningside discussed with the owners? I asked them to fix it. Or what, what does it tell Morningside? I think the, one of the it's going to be the same answer we get. Right. No, uh, uh, we're going around the room. Hold on just a second. My comment is, and, and I understand, as we as we attack. That, that nuisance to society, understand me, we still have to really take in consideration we're sending million dollar trucks out there. You see, we're sending million, and see, and we just can't continue to jeopardize that, okay? I, I wish it was some kind of way, you know, you could do some good patchwork with gravel and stuff like that to feel it, to make it feasible, see, because regardless of the argument, understand me, it still is a handicap accessible entity that really is causing pressure and pain on our people, understand me, who can't say, I can't put that big, uh, what's the average cost of one of your, one of your big? Uh, yeah, early years, about 1.4 million. Yeah, yeah, put that big, you know. You see, any, 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 any worries each time you send it out there, am I correct? Right. Well, I know you are. 
fight for you. I'm not going to say nothing, but I'm, I'm going to have that. Mr. Craig? My opinion is they've been collecting the money for years. It's time for them to step up and take care of their property. Okay. Mr. Snape? Take it with cool. In their covenants that all the owners have, it, it states that these covenants will be binding for 50 years. Okay. Upon the their the owners, their heirs, the representatives, successors, and assigns. It also says that uh, that all buildings and other structures and improvements shall be constructed and maintained at all times in accordance with all applicable building codes, applicable building codes, ordinances, rules, and regulations of all government, governmental entitled having jurisdiction. It also says adequate all street parking and loading facilities shall be provided on each unit to provide the requirement to be provided for the requirements of the unit owners, its, his customers, employees, and invitees. Invitees, <coughs> had talked with Ryan that it may be, could be considered the people who live there, maybe not. Goes on to say it includes common driveways within the property and it comply with all local building codes. Mr. Trotter, it does say it comply with all local building codes as far as if, there's, if we have any on the book about parking lots. The common areas shall be entrance ways, roadways, serving the parcels as shown on the plat. And uh, it goes on, it, it mentions this several times. Um, it says assessment of the maintenance areas. It goes on to what to do if. Um, can, I, can I put you on pause for a second and ask something? Sure. Okay, so. Ms. Bartee, if this has never become a city straight and they were supposed to comply with the laws way back when they built this mm -hmm. and they were never turned over, can we go back and sue them for never complying and making this a city straight? I mean, we should have done this <clears throat> 25 years ago. Based on the plat, Mayor, it was never the intention of the developer that this be a city street. Okay. It's included as a common area. We call it a street. Essentially, it's a driveway or a parking lot. Think about it like an apartment complex okay. that has a driveway that goes all the way, that okay. circles around. Essentially, that's what this is. Okay, thank you. Mr. Snay, sorry for yeah. interrupting. It just, that's fine. I'm just trying okay, to find anybody out. has any other questions as I go through it, it talks about assessments for maintenance of common areas it's clearly in their in their books here it says annual assessment the developer shall be authorized to assess the parcel owners annually in such amounts as the developer shall determine to be used exclusively for the improvement maintenance and operation of common areas common areas is the street including but not limited to the payment taxes utility bills repair replacement go on and it um, okay and the I read the will of Carl Batson who built this to see how it's passed down it went to his wife his wife left it to the daughter so if you want to assign the developer into it but then there's other language in here that the, the parcel owners are the people who are now in control of the homeowners association but the homeowners association if you are in arrears of paying your dues or your fair share based on your square footage then you don't have a voting right in the association um, uh, the enforceability uh, it says each of the rights created here under shall be specifically enforceable in a court of equity as Chantry Court. Mm -hmm. So who has cause to do what it says in here that if it's not done, you can do it in court. Okay. Can, that's what I was gonna say. Can, you have read enough that, okay, I'm that we should we need to challenge them okay. in court. So Miss Bartay. Do you think this is the direction, and I know I haven't uh, asked Mr. Head for his comments, but do you think this is the direction we should go with this? The homeowners? 
does the city have the right to be an aggrieved party and to sue? Or does it have to come from a homeowner? Based on my recollection of the bylaws, then the aggrieved party would be the association or a member of the association. Okay. So we can't do that. So that would be one of the 10, and I think that's right, property owners. Okay. So but, the answer is no. But anybody can file a lawsuit for anything. Yeah. Okay. If you, you can, the homeowners of those sections can force others to contribute for the purpose of getting things fixed. But if the city who has to respond in that area and the roads aren't being maintained to building codes, we can sue. Okay. You know, right. and put in injunction to make them comply with building codes. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Mr. Hayden. Yeah, I think Clay's on the right track. Okay. And you know, you've got the other standpoint, which is, you know, we can't provide adequate fire and police protection. Right. Okay. You know that that may make those condominiums can't be occupied. Okay. And in that case, you know, they're going to, you got to go after them where it's going to hurt them in the pocketbook. Okay. They're going to lose their tenants. They're not going to have utility service. They can't be occupied. Okay. So I think we just skirted around this for years and we just got to be tough because they're doing nothing. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Hubbard? Thankful to you. You did your homework, brother. So therefore, from that, my uh, my argument would be to sue them on behalf of holding our responders hostage. Okay, on the fact that you know serious equipment could get damaged in, in responding to it, and on what you said. Mr. Harris. I'm of the same opinion too. I don't want to see the city go to any expense to have to fix this. But my question again, is there nothing in our codes or in our rules and regulations that can allow the city of Springfield to come to them and have them to fix this as a private piece of property just as we've done with the Royal Inn? Is that was a I know there were other circumstances there besides just this. Yeah. But well we had tried to um, and researched a, a special tax assessment to see to get them to force them to do that and then we found out well you can't do that unless you get um, approval and if they're going to approve being assessed then you may as well then they may as well just go ahead and make the improvements on the road so that was not an option but we thought that would be one way sure. that we could enforce that so that That's did not work out so all we need is some attorney to tell us that yes, you can go ahead and you can sue them to perform everything that they're supposed to be doing for the covenants. And if an attorney can give us the uh, site, the proper section or whatever to do that, and this board approves it, then we're on. But you say that doesn't exist, city attorney. There's nothing there to do what she's saying do. She has to dig and find you it. Have to find me. I think it's, uh, it, in my opinion, I think it's time I to move I think it forward. probably does exist somewhere, so. Well, let, well let, all them, like Bruce said is, I mean, can't codes tell me you can't operate these apartments or this set of buildings and unless you fix I this I think street? our codes, are, well, he's out in the audience, but I think you have gotten onto them for various codes violations, have you not? Property management. Come to the, yeah. Stretch property. Legs, stretch it's all legs. over the property. It's, it's property not style. the driveway. Because But is that not included in the property, the driveway? Yeah, it's it's all part of the property. Yeah, if it's private, it's yeah. owned. It's yes, not. he's the the property owner, the biggest one is Martin Abraham. He's the biggest property owner there. Uh, the our department would write a uh, violation letter on the parking lot and he would repair with some quick creek. Just patching it. That's why it looks like a. It's just scabbed over. Uh, the previous code directors or uh, community development directors have written letters to all the property owners and went. We're going to do a special tax on them and do stuff, but that really 
hasn't happened. Uh, my view, the, 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 the fire access is what is the biggest problem and is the most serious. And that I think would be a, uh, an avenue to look at as far as the uh, fire code has to maintain that fire access around that property, mm -hmm. more so than just the property maintenance. The property maintenance code for the park for driveways and parking lots is mainly for erosion control. Sure. Not, it's not a life safety issue, but it is for the fire department. That is a life safety issue. They're, they're, the, the code says it has to be stable and firm and uh, can't have all them potholes and gravel. So that'd be an avenue we ought to look at is, okay. is, is that. Thank you. That's so gentlemen, is it my understanding from what I'm hearing that you would like the staff to go back and research going this direction? Uh, yes, ma'am. And our city attorney? Especially with what he said. Yep. By I would ask that question with this board favor instructing the city attorney to research this to see if there's anything that we can do to make them abide by this. Done that. Yeah. So we've already done that? You're saying no, step it up a little more. I mean, Somebody want to make a motion? I, mean, I don't remember seeing all this stuff I, when it was made before, but, but can I make a motion? Yes, sir, you can. I would make a motion that we instruct the city attorney to really dig hard and long to find other cases. Uh, to see if we go this. Yeah, I that governs this specific idea. Okay, and bring those back and next bring month. Bring it back to us next month. Is that how you want it to read? Yes, ma'am. What? Let me get this clear. You asking her? I to, want her. I want her to he look is. at case law on, on I other situations. Get the case law. She answered that question last time. Listen she to me. Find let's, it. let's keep on. Since what you brought in. No, we told her not to. We, we, we didn't tell her. Since you brought in this, we didn't have that. Okay. Are you listening to me, Mrs. Okay. Smith? Okay. I just want to take make it. your motion. My motion is to, for her to find case cases. And Come back and be ready to discuss this. Exactly, and other material that's pertinent to, to this. To move forward. To move forward and bring it back next month. With pursuing the fact that our fire department. Exactly, you can add that along to it too. So the motion would be to find ways to go forward through the codes violations method first. The method, and then, the, the, or dig deep to find a way that would give the city the authority to sue. What we're looking for is he's, what he was saying. They're impeding and imposing life-threatening issues, okay? Okay. So, you're, so, so what I want to do is search and find cases in other cities or find ways that we can push toward. In the direction of? In the direction of a legal Settlement. And I keep pointing at the fire hall, but that's the one that has the most. Yeah, that's the one that has the real most. Okay. Okay. So his motion, as I understand it, is that the city attorney mm -hmm. come back with us next month to see if we can move forward with suing them. Correct? Because. It's a detriment to our police department and our fire department. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? Uh, excuse me. Could that be a minute to also add how we're looking into the codes violation aspects of it first? She's going to look at she's well, We'll at, do that. She's going to okay. look at the yeah, all we can of do that. that. The city staff will do that. She's going to look into the whole gamut of of, of why we want to do this, okay? That's why I made the motion. Mr. Okay. Head, you look like you've really got to say something. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get, uh, there's a motion on the floor. Do we have to have a second? We have to have a second. have a second for the motion. I will second the motion with the option of being able to ask another question about his motion. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. we, and I, I'm pretty sure everybody around the room wants to say something, so you can go first, Mr. Is this Harry. a feasible way to handle this, what he's, what he's proposing? <clears throat> Mr. Trotter? It answers it. Okay. Mr. Hayden. I'm concerned that the that the legal route uh, may not be the answer. Uh, I think it lies more in our codes and the um, and the fact that it 
make those it makes those properties um, they can't be uh, they can't be used for their for their purpose okay which is rental okay, okay. Uh, good point but you're yeah, saying the city yeah, would yes. do that and the same thing, the city would also investigate that end of it. That's Absolutely. Staff would. Yeah. I mean, Everyone, we will do that anyway. Right. Everyone will work together. So until that part's completed, would this part he's suggesting be exactly. necessary? Man. Because I, if, I, I oh, no. if, if we're going to be talking about legal maneuvers and positions, we need to have an executive session. We're just instructing her what to do. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I think, you, I think you have to have the actual litigation yeah we we're just pop. talking about what the direction to go is that correct miss barty correct we don't have it to have an executive okay. session i, 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 I would disagree from my rep my understanding are you no. finished i'm not, i just think i just think that's the, the fastest way to resolution and and go it has the most teeth you think the codes the codes miss, okay miss mr greg Evidently, they know that they're doing wrong if they're going out and patching potholes mm -hmm. every time. So they're owning up to they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, I want to make them fix it and fix it right without using taxpayers' money. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Harris. Right. Would it be proper to, I mean, I made the second to the motion. I'm willing to withdraw it, asking the maker of the motion if he would be willing to withdraw it until the city has the opportunity through the coach department to well, investigate well, you, what we can do. Let me point, tell you. Point of order, Mayor. Sir. To make if, a, if to make a point speak. of order, if a motion's been made and second, it belongs to the floor. It has to be voted on takeoff. You can't retract. Which is true. That's not right. And I'm not going to retract. It has to be voted on oh, takeoff. I asked him if he was willing to retract. I'm not going to retract, Mr. Sneed, if you give Mr. me a Hubbard. chance to explain. My situation is the reason why I made the motion, Mr. Harris, like I made the motion, is that we have exalted we started about 10 years ago through the codes department, understand, with letters and threats and stuff like this. And yes, Mr. Gray, it's like they laughed at us, okay? Now we've got to put some teeth in it, okay? okay. And the only way to put the teeth in it, Bruce. Hit him in the pocketbook. Huh? Hit him in the pocketbook. Hit him in the pocketbook. Hit him in the pocketbook, but, but in order to hit him in the pocket, pocketbook, we have to have sort of, you know, and if codes Pressure. can if codes can do that, I think are we not all in agreement that we just want this to move forward, gentlemen? My question would be, and I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But do we want to instruct the city attorney to do this? And it's going to cost the city money before the codes department exhaust all their avenues of knowing whether they can do anything or not before they. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. Almost, anyway. I'm almost certain that. Uh, <laughs> He's pretty exhausted with what he's doing. Okay, that's, Mr. Snake. Uh, what he has done. That's, that's what I was going to say. Um, you telling me we haven't exhausted the codes angle in all these years? I mean, and and I, re I specifically recall her answering the question about precedents in case law. Oh, the last time we okay. asked her to do this. I'm, I'm going to take a pause. Not, was, I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to take a five minute break. Someone had asked me earlier about 20 minutes ago to have a break. And then when we come back, our assistant city manager, Mr. Ryan Martin, would like to speak. I think he, um, there was some light bulb moments over here on okay. this side of the room. So, I mean, I think we're all, <laughs> all want to uh, make sure that we handle this situation. <laughs> five minute break. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs>